So we will uh, kind of have a final word about the absolute temperature scale and we I know if we have done it last time but I am still not going to take it because there is something new about it today and uh, we will uh, see uh, um, absolute 0 and then look at ideal gas temperature and how it relates to the absolute temperature scale and then we are almost done. We made the uh, temperature scale in the last class and we said if we take 100 degrees on the Celsius scale and um, this is absolute scale we got the Kelvin scale here we had the two markers of 100 degrees and 0 degrees and, and after the small bit of calculation we got temperature T prime let us call it equal to 373 T prime equal to T dash whatever you call it T prime 273 um, and the idea was that we have a heat engine running between these two temperatures um, boiling point of water and melting point of ice and measure work and heat if not in a Carnot engine the way we know it. Uh, maybe an equivalent process which is like a Carnot cycle, we get these two temperatures. Now, I am going to take a step further and say that here is my um, reservoir at T1 prime, I run a heat engine E1. to T2 prime and then put another heat engine E2 to T3 prime and so on and so forth. The work output ok, so we can say Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5 and so on. The work output is W and let us we will say that the W the work output is same for each of those small engines ok. So, I will write a few relations quickly Q 1 minus Q 2 equal to W and this same as um, Q 2 minus Q 3 and Q 3 minus Q 4 and so on that is the way we are constructing the series of engines. All of them have the same work output and for absolute scale we have seen that Q 1 by sorry, Q 1 by Q 2 equal to T 1 prime by T 2 prime absolute temperatures Q 2 by Q 3 is a similar ratio of T 2 prime by T 3 prime and so on and I am going to maybe you can see it already, but I am going to write this as Q i whichever i being 1, 2, 3, 4 whatever it is being proportional to T i prime that is what we are saying for each engine and then I am going to convert this into Q i equal to some constant C times T i and then I am going to plug that in into the first equation and you can easily see that the constant of proportionality will cancel out from all of them. So, all we will we'll get is T 1 prime minus T 2 prime is equal to T 2 prime minus T 3 prime all of these equal to let us say delta T prime we are still working with absolute temperatures if all the T's are with the prime. So, if you have engines giving out equal amount of work you are making equal changes in temperature between 
across each engine. And if you think about a small engine which is the, the equivalent work is one degree change in this temperature, absolute temperature, then essentially you are creating the temperature scale by doing that. So, T2 prime would be 372, T3 prime will be 371 and so on. Imagine putting 100 small engines between the two markers of uh, boiling uh, of water and melting of ice and each of these engines are identical in terms of they are giving the same amount of work output. Now, if we think about it this way that uh, the work output I am going to connect it to um, remember the piston cylinder kind of arrangement we showed earlier. So, if this was a piston that was giving out the work I am going to connect it to a lever and the lever can rotate and that will be connected to a pulley which has a weight. So, m times g mass or weight of that small thing that is hanging by the pulley times the amount of distance the, um, the distance by which or the elevation by which the work output raises that weight is an equivalent work done. And now we are saying all the engines have same work output, the same thing is happening every time. And you can extend this. So, if, a, if each of these engines is, is raising the same amount of mass, a tiny mass by a small distance, but exactly the same distance. So, this became a very significant idea in measuring temperature. At that time when it was proposed, it was 1848 when, when Kelvin or Thomson, whatever you call him that he came up with this idea. The problem uh, they were facing is that um, is about measuring temperature, there were different scales like we know right now of Celsius and Fahrenheit and there are all different kinds of instruments to measure temperature. They were using of course, mercury, they were using water, they were using alcohol, they were using all kind of things. Somewhere I read they are using some ex oil extract from whales to measure temperature. Whatever they thought is the most accurate and best temperature measurement uh, has the best properties to measure temperature. And there were variability in all of these and nobody knew what to do, which one is best. Here comes a guy, he says that forget all those properties, um, thermal expansion of each of these quantities with temperature and how much heat is absorbed, heat capacity of each of these bodies, all of these heat itself was very uncertain. In fact, if you read a little bit more about that what is happening, there was something called a calorific, um, caloric theory and some other theory. Some people thought heat is a fluid that flows and some people thought it's kind of some kind of motion of particles, ok. So, all those uncertainties was completely bypassed by this idea which said that we know what is motion from Newton's laws. We have already established, we learned, we know what is motion, what is uh, weight, we know what is kinetic and potential energy very clearly from Newton's laws of motion, we are very comfortable with that. If you take that idea and make sure that the same amount of potential energy rise is done by each engine, you do not have to worry about anything about heat or the properties of the material to measure temperature. So, that was the big change that came up and that is why this became so important. How to measure it using this is still a challenge, but still uh, conceptually using Carnot's theory, this was the idea. And if you continue this, as I said, you make the full scale. Whether this scale that you measure uh, made by raising weight was match would match with the mercury scale, not sure. In fact, there are it pretty much matches uh, uh, closely, but there are some places where there is a difference because you know imagine mercury this is the property of mercury that, that expansion of how much it expands for every degree. It may not be exactly the same at every at where it, whether it is at 0 degree or 100 degrees they may, they may change. For that matter any other metal they were using it may have variability, but this one was not. So, there comes our absolute scale. So, next is absolute 0. So, 
So, the idea is can we extend this series of engines keep going down up to what point and that is why the question was that absolute 0 is not achievable. So, we will see that how it comes through using the same ideas. So, Q 1 um, or let me write it this way for engine E 1 we have Q 2 equal to Q 1 minus W. We start with Q 1 extract W out of it we left with Q Q 2. The next engine Q has heat rejected Q 3 is Q 2 minus W or Q 1 minus twice W. And if you extend this for the nth engine that would be n plus 1 q n minus w yeah q that is equal to q 1 minus n w fine. So, what I am writing is that all of these are heat rejected Uh, these are heat added so we start with some amount of heat and take out w each time so we are q2 is less than q1 obviously and so it, it the heat rejected decreases at every step decreased by the amount w and if it such so happens that we take we have chosen w equal to q 1 by n whatever that n is. The example that we have taken that we start with 300 at 373 and we have each engine giving 1 degree change in temperature and if you have 373 of those engines that is it you would end up with this. So, the, so the nth engine is rejecting 0 heat and that is not possible that violates Carnot law. Repeat this in. Yeah, so we are saying that we start with Q 1 and put a, put a number of these engines giving out the same amount of work and in the earlier example we stopped at 273 because we wanted to make these subdiv 100 subdivisions let us say I am saying let us not stop at 273 keep going and stop where W Q 1 equal to N W stop at that value of N which gives us this you are taking a W every time from that Q 1 that was initial amount of heat that you have taken from the reservoir uh, of, from this uh, 100 degree Celsius or whatever the boiling pot water pot of water. If you go there each of it, that engine is producing W work, but the final engine is producing W work, but the heat input itself is W in fact Q n is W you can work that out so, W minus W you taken out all the heat as work no heat rejected. For that matter if you take a combination of all of these engines including E n all these engines together it takes up Q 1 from the source reject 0 and takes uh, gives out work output which is equal to n times W which is equal to the amount of heat we started with not possible. So, um, what we are saying is if, if heat rejection goes to um, 0 that cannot be achieved and the corresponding temperature if you if you have 373 of these you are reaching absolute 0 here that is not possible. So, um, you can go as close as possible to 0 
right. So, just think about this way. Let us write the efficiency of each of these engines eta 1, 1 minus T2 prime by T1 prime. Efficiency is defined in terms of work and heat. It is equal to 1 minus Q2 by Q1. Now, I am replacing it using any of these relations which is true for absolute scale. The ratio of heat is equal to ratio of temperatures of the absolute scale. So, I am just replacing that writing efficiency in terms of temperature, but these are all T primes which are absolute temperatures. Eta 2 is 1 minus T 3 prime by T 2 prime and you can continue this eta n equal to 1 minus T prime n plus 1 over T prime n. And at the same time let me fill this up by writing the Q relations also Q 1 by T 1 prime equal to Q 2 by T 2 prime agreed. In, in, uh, rearrange, rearrange the earlier relation this equal to Q 3 by T 3 prime equal to and so on until Q n by T n prime equal to Q n plus 1 by T prime n plus 1. By second law it has to be this way for every heat engine, every car not reversible heat engine um, which is a car not engine. So, if we get to a situation where n plus 1 q n plus 1 is 0, it is only possible when t n plus 1 also goes to 0, 0 by 0. But that will give us an efficiency of this equal to 1, a Carnot cycle with 1 efficiency is not possible. We have to reject some amount of heat. So, all it says is absolute 0 cannot be reached, whatever you do, you can only reach a very, very close to this. As long as Q1 plus 1 is not 0, you still can reach that temperature and you can always have an engine which is, which is very, very efficient. Efficiency very close to 1 because T n plus 1 is going to close to 0, but not reach 0 or cannot cross 0, it cannot go down below 0. If you cannot reach 0, you cannot cross over. And that is it. If you cannot cross 0 on this scale, you have reached what is called the absolute 0. Keep going down until 0 Kelvin and below that is not possible. Once again very different from other scales where people had put 0 at let us say melting point of water. If you look at Fahrenheit scale um, 32 degrees is where water melts. You, you place a 0 which is apparently from the coldest day when that that scale was made by Fahrenheit in Germany somewhere. So, it was fairly random and you could always go below 0 because you can get always a day colder than the coldest day of that year. But here comes a degree uh, scale which is here which, which said uh, if you look at molecules and atoms from that point of view the kinetic theory says that all motion of molecules and atoms ceases at that point they are all stationary 0 energy. You cannot cross that barrier. Okay. Any questions? All right. Then we'll take up the last thing um, for today's lecture is to show the connection between ideal gas, which is the common most common fluid in thermodynamics, and pretty much the only fluid we use for um, propulsion. Uh, air as ideal gas for propulsion aircraft engine application. Ideal gas temperature, the ideal gas law is we write it this way 
and let me put it down one more time on the board. Um, we say PV equal to NRT, P is pressure, V is volume, N is number of moles, R is universal gas constant, R hat. This is a value of 8.314 that you would have memorized earlier. We change that to a uh, different, um, slightly different formula by saying MRT, R is specific gas constant per unit mass. And this is equal to 287.1 joules per kg Kelvin. If I remember correctly. So, per kg comes in, not per mole or kilo mole. And this is for air. And then we have a slightly simpler version, which is PV, lowercase v, which is specific volume, is RT. And many a times, especially if you go towards um, um, aerodynamics or when you sort of think about flow and try to compute properties of flow, you will see this more often. P equal to rho RT, closed density. Fine? Clear about it? Midsums are coming, so we should know this for sure. And now remember the value 287.1, if it is not given, please use that and mention that you are using air. Okay? All right. Um, so, here we are using a temperature T. We just want to see how T is related to T prime. And you already probably know the answer, but we will just do it one small um, development to just show it. We will start with Carnot cycle, which we had already described at quite a length for ideal gas. Four steps of Carnot cycle. Another thing to remember for the mid-sem. Um, I am going to use notation states A, lowercase a, b, C and D and um, denote the two isotherms constant temperature lines. So, this is at T1 and T2. Remember when we did Carnot cycle, that was the first uh, thing we did in uh, when we came to Carnot de description. We did not still know have the absolute scale. So, we were working with simple t, no t primes. Okay. In fact, in many books if you follow, if you look through, they would introduce what is a lowercase t for temperature, even including our textbook. So, they would be doing everything with lowercase t and keep the uppercase t for the absolute scale. We have done a little bit differently. So, I am going to stick to this. T1 and T2 are the temperatures where heat addition Q1 and heat rejection Q2 and just to be clear, let us show the arrow directions of the cycle and I am going to borrow a few results from our previous derivation and I will go a little fast. You can, um, if you do not understand, stop me or look up your notes on um, that lecture two weeks back maybe, some one week back. We had written down that, uh, st okay, let us say step for step uh, not 1 to A to B, we had Q 1 2 minus W 1 2 equal to U 2 minus U 1. Oh, I am sorry, not 1 2, A B. Your name notes would have 1 2, but I am going to have switched to A and B, keeping T 1, T 2, and Q 1, Q 2 separate. Um, a B. So, the Q, uh, the, the heat exchange during process A B minus the work interaction W A B is U B minus U A. The right hand side was 0 because the temperature change is, uh, temperature is constant across this step and we did Q A B equal to W A B equal to P D V integral from A to B. And this came out to be very nice R T A. 
sorry T1 log of V B over V A. I had used uppercase V and lowercase V interchangeably um, just by saying that the mass of the gas inside the cylinder is 1 unity, but we can change it and we can keep track of the mass if required. This happens to be Q1 and it is positive. The work done by the gas during this heat addition process was it is an expansion process we said it, it is positive V B is greater than V1 V A you can see it on the on the picture P V diagram and then fine Q1 was a magnitude of heat that was taken up. And we did the same thing for step B C no C D the other heat and I am going to write this as Q C D equal to W C D all the stuff at the end we have R T 2 ln V D over V C and it is negative. If you define Q 2 as the magnitude of the heat rejected then I would say all these quantities are negative. So, why do not I put a negative sign and equate it to Q2? And instead of putting a negative sign here, I am going to replace the um, subscripts Vc and Vd inside the log. Switch them. Agreed? question it is fairly straightforward especially if you have followed the previous development I am just reusing those results. So, Q 1 over Q 2 is T 1 over T 2 times log of V B over V A divided by log of V C over V D. Okay. What is the next step? We derive relation between the two volume ratios, yes, using the other two steps, the adiabatic steps. Okay, let us do that. Step B to C, let us dq minus dw equal to du and if you want to be precise, I would put a cross over the d for q and w and remind ourselves that they are not perfect differentials does not matter so much in this process. Adiabatic dq is 0, dw is pdv minus and the other side here is cv times dt. Internal energy is equal to cv specific heat at constant volume times temperature. And then we use ideal gas law in this form to write this as um, minus RT over V dV. Um, well, let's swim M or something. Let me switch to lowercase v. And there you go, we have dv over v equal to cv is r over gamma minus 1. So, we have 1 over gamma minus 1 dt over t. And now, we integrate. I left minus, right? Yeah. Let us give minus here. So, now, if we integrate from b to c, 
let me write that answer here, we have ln v b over b c equal to 1 over gamma minus 1 ln t c over t d. Now, I made a mistake t c by t ok t 2 over t 1. Is it correct? V B and V C, V B is less than V C and T 2 is less than T 1. So, the minus sign has been adjusted in such a way that they match up. Got it? Okay. What is the next step? If you apply the same process, um, process to D to A, we will get ln V, V A by V D equal to, yeah, yeah, I, no other way around T 2 by T 1, either you put a minus or you flip the ratio of temperatures. Okay, so you're getting close, and the right hand side is the same. So we equate the left hand side of these two. And we will get. I'm going to um, write uh, V B over V C equal to V A over V D. And what we want is V B over V A, which gives us V B over V A equal to V C over V D. And that we bring it back to this equation Q 1 by Q 2 time is equal to T 1 by T 2 times the ratio of log of those uh, volumes they drop out. So, we get Q 1 by Q 2 equal T 1 by T 2 is equal to T 1 prime by T 2 prime from second law. The way we have defined absolute temperature. So, the first one, the first relation that we wrote here came out of making a Carnot engine out of ideal gas. And we said ideal gas follows this relation with our temperature as we know from earlier. We got this relation. The, the right hand side in terms of T prime ratios is from absolute temperature. Essentially, we are saying the ratio of ideal gas temperature is equal to the ratio of absolute temperatures. If you fix one point where those two match up, then every other temperature will match up. So, the ideal gas temperature which you always knew to reuse, use the value in Kelvin turns out to the absolute temperature. T equal to T prime. So, the absolute temperature the way it was developed and now that we know it is equal to ideal gas temperature and at the same temperature we are using it every day in solving problems for air or many other gases and you use, use the Kelvin scale for all those calculations. Okay. So, um, wherever we had written T prime, all the things we had written T prime, we can replace by T now. The T that we had already known from very beginning and I am going to write this relation Q 1 by Q 2 equal to T 1 by T 2 replace T by T prime by T T in second law.
as long as p is in is is in kelvin as I and then as i said that many books follow a temp different notation a lower case t until they get to this lecture or this material this section they say now i'm going to switch to capital t which is our I absolute temperature we had done a bit differently we use capital t throughout and then we have def defined our absolute temperature using t prime and then we said t prime and t are the same so forget t prime we don't have to use it anymore but we know that that's absolute temperature this is the most important relation that came out of it the ratio of heats is equal to the ratio of temperatures on kelvin scale and that's it we'll use that in the tutorial on monday <laughs>